John and the baptized one by one. John was a Baptist and I am a Baptist too. talking to Brother Tony Weaver, <laughs> Brother Tony told him, said, now you brag on Brother Blue and he'll preach. Yeah. <laughs> I've never had so many nice things said about me in my life. <laughs> Glad to see you. Brother George, good to see you. Your choir, good to have you folks with us. Come on. Let's see Appreciate something. you being here. Let's How many here tonight that raised your hand and said, I've never heard Brother Ed preach? Would you raise them again? Where have you been? <laughs> My goodness. When I leave here tonight, I don't want anybody confused. I want you to know what I've said. A lot of folks don't care what you say. They just, how you say it. Come on. How you say it. I remember this little story. A Sunday school teacher was teaching. She had uh, four and five-year-old girls. Some folks get mixed up. You just got to. Take your time and try your best to get the word to them. And this teacher had these five and four or five year old girls and she said, now, anybody here today tell me what today is? One little girl said, today's Palm Sunday. Teacher said, that's wonderful, that's just marvelous. Well, she said, can anybody tell me what next Sunday is? Same little girl said, next Sunday's Easter. Said, that's great, darling, that's marvelous. Well, say, can anybody tell me what happened on Easter? Same little girl raised her hand and said, that's the day that Jesus came out of the tomb. And before the teacher could respond, the same little girl said, but if he sees his shadow, he's got to go back in for seven weeks. <laughs> Some folks get a little confused, and I don't want to confuse nobody. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, the Bible said that we're disposed to speak words yes, sir. easy to be understood. You're right, preacher. Easy Bless to you. be understood. Easy. Fifty years in the ministry, and I'm deeply ashamed of how little I know. Deeply ashamed, embarrassed at my own self. I wish I knew more, Brother George. I should have. It's not God's fault. And if you're not studying the word, shame on you. The Bible said my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. He said you do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. The Bible said I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren. The word ignorant does not imply or suggest or insinuate stupidity. It means that we're ignorant or don't have knowledge of something we ought to know. And you know our churches are packed jam full of people that are ignorant to this book that I hold in my hand. Yes, sir, brother. You're right. The only thing they know is supposed to have black back books and supposed to say King James Version on it. And I agree with both of those. Yes, sir. But my dear friend, the Bible said that we're to hide his word in our heart that we might not sin against the word of God. Amen. The Bible said thy word is very pure. Yes, sir. Therefore thy servant loveth it. Yeah. The Bible said heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. That's right. You're right. The Bible said he set his word above his name. The Bible said in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then it went ahead and said it was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The Bible said, wherewith shall a young man cleanse his ways? And he said, by taking heed to the word, amen. The word is a light unto my feet and a lamp unto my pathway. It's bread to me when I'm hungry. It's water to me when I'm thirsty. It's encouragement to me when I'm discouraged. It's light to me when I'm in darkness. It gets me up 
when I'm down. Yes. Brings me down when I get too far up. The word of God is all true. I believe in the inerrancy of scripture. I believe in the inerrancy, in the infallible word of God. I believe it's right from cover to cover. I believe that. And this is the book I'm gonna preach out of. Now recently, recently, I had to have surgery. I have a pacemaker now. The doctor that put my pacemaker in is a good friend. I've known him all his life. And he knows how I preach. And he said, now, Ed, you can't run and jump like you used to. He said, that thing will do a good job, but it can't keep up with you as fast as you go. <laughs> and so that bothered me. He said, you gotta slow down. I said, I don't know whether I can or not. So I went to see my pastor, Brother Kelton Williams. And I said, Brother Kelton, the, the doctors told me I've got to change my style. Brother Kelton is one of the most original, sweetest, finest men I've ever yes. met. Yes, sir. sir. Well, he said, all I can tell you, Ed, is you've got to still believe like a Baptist and preach like a Methodist. <laughs> so, <laughs> amen. Now, so I'm having a hard time. <laughs> Now, my mother-in-law was Methodist, but she raised 19 Baptist humans. I told her we appreciate her contribution. Amen. Amen. Now, open your Bibles to the book of Hebrews, chapter 11. Our, my wife and I have been preaching 50 years, and my wife and I have been married 50 years. I remember reading a story where this couple been married 50 years, were celebrating their 50th anniversary. Oh, a huge crowd came, huge crowd came to be with them on that uh, great day. They celebrated and everybody left, went on their way home and the wife said to her husband, said, now honey, sit down, we've got to have a talk. So we've been together 50 years, we fought, We've pouted, we've fussed, we've argued. We have nothing in common. I said, I'm praying the Lord to get us out of our misery is gonna kill one of us. And she said, now when you're dead, I'm gonna go live with my sister in Dallas. <laughs> she had it all figured out which one is gonna get out of here first. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 11, please, and verse five. Would you stand while we read? Then I'll have a moment of prayer, and then I'll bring a message from the Word of God. The Bible said, by faith Enoch was translated, moved, yes, sir. that he should not see death. It was not found because God had translated, moved him. Mm -hmm. For before his translation, before his moving, before his changing places, yes, sir. he had this testimony that he pleased God. Yes. Our Father, Yes. Help us now. Give us that blessed anointing, that liberty, that unction that makes it easy for the man of God to preach. The Bible said without him we can do nothing. Without him we are nothing. And so God tonight touch us. Make our tongue a ready writer's pen. Lord we need a liberty from God. For we pray this in Christ's name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. Bless you, God. The, 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 the things about this man Enoch I know very little about. The scriptures does not give a great long story about Enoch. Now there are other men in the Bible named Enoch, but this one in particular I know this much about. I do not know what kind of a house he lived in, I do not know how many sheep or cattle he owned. I do not know that, but I one day I was reading this and suddenly this portion of scripture jumped out at me. The Bible said Enoch had a testimony. Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Yes, sir. And then it said this testimony pleased God. You get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. 
He had a testimony that pleased God. Now Enoch, the Bible said, was the seventh from Adam. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seventh from Adam. I know this, that Enoch was a walking man. I know who his walking partner was. He walked with God. Oh, what a privilege to walk with God. Now, I want to just concentrate for a while tonight on this thought, a testimony. Every last one of us have a testimony. Every one of us have one. It may be good or it may be bad, but you have one. Now, you can spend a lifetime in a having a testimony and bringing up a testimony and building a testimony, a good testimony, and tear it down in just a few minutes. Now, there's something else about your testimony. It will follow you even after you're dead. It will live on. <laughs> it's not a matter of whether you... See, here's the thing about it. The Bible tells me that we are an epistle known and read of all men. Do I hear amen? Amen. <coughs> Excuse me. Everybody is watching somebody. That's right. It may be tonight that somebody here tonight, somebody may be the very one yes, that's standing in front of somebody. The Bible said, Paul said, lest I should hinder the gospel of Christ. You can have the greatest preacher that ever lived. Paul, for instance. You can have, and just name them off, one after the other, great men of God yes. come and stand behind this pulpit. But did you know one bad testimony can kill the influence of that message over a lost man yes. sitting right back there? Yes. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I'm coughing for some reason or other. <coughs> there are so many folks tonight that have no awareness no awareness of what a bad testimony can do. I remember reading from the book of St. John, chapter 5. Jesus came upon this man laying by the side of the pool. Yes, sir. And he'd been laying there. How many of you know how long he'd been laying there? 38 years he'd been laying by the side of this pool. Yes, sir. At a certain time of the year, an angel came down into the pool and troubled the waters and stirred it up. Yes, sir, and who got down into that pool was yes, healed of whatever problem he yes, may have. Yes, sir. Now I'm just Amen. going to the message. You stay with me. I'll be there in just a Come minute. On, Come on. And this man, Jesus talked to him and found out he'd been laying there for 38 years. And this man told the saddest commentary that I've ever heard in the Bible. The man said, when I would go down, when I start down toward the pool, how many of you know what the Bible said? <clears throat> it said, someone steps down before me. Yeah. Did you ever wonder why those pews back there may be empty? Come on, preacher. Come on, preacher. Did you ever wonder? You say, well, it's the color of the carpet. Yeah, and I can look at your eyes and tell ain't nobody home either. <laughs> it's not the color of the carpet. It's not the lighting fixture. Did you ever wonder there is a great possibility the reason those pews are empty, it could be because of bad testimonies. Amen. I remember I moved into a community one time to pastor a church. I remember I was out visiting soon after I got there and walked up to a little gas station, two pumps. Coca-Cola sign over the door said, this is Bill's place. Sitting out front was a man whittling and spitting tobacco juice. I imagined that was Bill, and I said, are you Bill? Yes, I'm Bill. I'm the preacher up at the church. He said, well, I've been expecting you. They told me you was a man that went out and I said, yes, yeah, me. And I said, I've come to ask you to come to church. Come on, I want you to come to church. <laughs> and in Russia, that means I won't be there. And Japanese, just pedal your boat on down the road, Doc. I ain't coming, amen? I ain't coming. I will not be there. Well, you said maybe he didn't like you. No, he never met me in his life. Never did. He didn't know who I was until I told him I was Ed Blue. He never saw. 
I said, Bill, why aren't you going to come to church? He said, come in here and I'll show you. He took me in his little office and sitting on a little table was, how many of you remember when you were kids, you buy cheese and there was little wooden boxes, little wooden boxes, square. I see that brother shaking his head. He looked like a cheese eater. <laughs> and he had three of those little wooden boxes. Do you remember when you used to go to the store and get some potatoes and coffee and beans and salt and sugar? And they had those little books and they put your name up on the top of the book right here and charge it. And you said, I'll be in Friday to pay you. I'll come in Friday to pay you. And uh, he had two of those boxes were so full of books, they were flowered over on the ends like that. One of the boxes had three books in it. That's all it had, three books. And he said, Preacher, you asked me why I'm not coming to church. Thank you, ma'am. I'll put you in my will. <laughs> he said, uh, he said, Preacher said, three. You see, three books in one box. I said, that's what I'll see. He said, you know who those are? I said, no, I don't. Yes, I do. He said, those books belong to the bootleggers, three bootleggers in this county. That's who they belong to. He said, you can set your watch. They'll be here on Friday to pay their bill. And he said, now look at those other bo books there. And there they was all lined up like soldiers yeah. in those boxes. And I looked, did you ever say something you wish you never had said in your life? Yeah. yeah. I looked at them and I said, oh, a bunch of my members trade with you. Uh, oh Lord, I wish I never had said that. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly come pouring out of his mouth were curse words. I've been the army. I've been a truck driver. I've been a bootlegger. I've, I've been with a rough crowd. He was using curse words that he invented as he went along. His eyes were sparkling and foam was coming out the corner of his mouth. He called them names. He beat those books. He said those lying church members come in here and bought my groceries and said, I'll come back and pay you on Friday. And now they go back over on that back road instead of coming down by my store. And when they do come, they look over the other way. He said, blankety black and started you. He said, I'm not coming. I won't be there. I will not be there. Now let me stop right there long enough to say this. There's probably a bunch of those people uh, there's probably a bunch of those folks right now that'll have blood on their hands yes, sir. when they stand before God. Yes, Let me tell you something right now. Your testimony yes, is one of the most vital yes, things sir. that you've got in this life. Amen. That's right. Amen. Did you know right now your, your children yes, may go to hell yes, because of a bad testimony yes, in your house? Your bad temper yes, sir. that you should have got under control a long time ago is your testimony. Amen? Yes, sir. Your attitude is your testimony. Hello? Yes, sir. Now get your head up. I'll let you know when we're going to pray. <laughs> Not going to pray yet. Just going to preach a while. There are men and women right now in this community probably all around here that you will never get them into church because of somebody's bad testimony. Yes, sir, Hello? Yes. Oh, friend. Paul said, lest I should hinder the gospel of Christ. I don't want to be the stumbling block in front of anybody. I don't want to be that individual that will get in front of somebody and keep them from coming to know the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, I remember one time in a church I was pastoring. I remember so well, a young lady came to the altar. I remember it so well. And she got down on her knees. Now, I do not endorse how she did what she did. But her mother came here and got on her knees by the side of her. And her daddy bowed here, and they began to pray. And she raised up and said to her daddy, get away from me. I haven't got a bit of confidence in you. She said to her mother, get away from me. I haven't got any confidence in you either. She said, me and my brother ride in the back seat of the car on the way home. And we want no more than get out of the churchyard till you're talking about everybody in church. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You want to know why altars are empty? 
You want to know why the tears are stopped in many a church? Bad testimonies. We won't do what we say we'll do. We lie to one another. We talk about one another. We're bitter in our hearts. Envy and strife and modesty. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. There's people in church that are members of the church and won't even speak to one another. Amen? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, here I am coming down to the end of my journey. Here I am at the end of my journey. And I think I would die if I thought my children and my grandchildren didn't have any confidence in me. See, I've got no right to get up here and preach to you and to your children if my testimony before I came down here wasn't good before I got here. Our testimony is so vital let me ask you something. If someone at the job where you work were to become suddenly, extremely, deathly ill and started screaming, oh, I need somebody to tell me how to get saved. I need somebody to pray for me. And you were to run to their side and say, I'll do it. No, I've watched you. You stand around and listen to old vulgarity and you laugh at it. Yeah, but I'm a Baptist. I'm a, oh, listen, that has nothing to do with it. You can be a Baptist all day long. That's not it. It's knowing Christ and letting him shine Amen. through your life. Amen. Preacher. Amen. Preacher, brother. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Over the schoolhouse where you go, if some student of the same thing were to come deathly ill, would die, would they have any confidence in you? See, confidence is so important. Oh, it's easy. See, you say, well, you ought to stay here and listen to me give my testimony. I don't give a flip about you giving your testimony. Fact is, I don't like to hear these bragging sessions break out in church. No, a testimony will always magnify the Lord. Yeah. Amen. It'll never exalt you. It'll never lift yeah. you up. It'll always yeah. magnify the Lord. Good preacher. I don't care a thing about what you say as you stand up piously and say, I want to say, no. I want to see the one you live. You walk and you talk. Amen. I want to see that Christian that pays his bills. Yes, sir, preacher. That Christian that doesn't lie. God said in his word, you are the salt of the earth. You are a city set on a hill. You are, you are, oh, friend, listen. Everybody's looking at us tonight. Yes. Somebody yes. may be watching yes. you that you don't yes. know one yes. single yes. thing yes. about. You're right, preacher. That you yes. don't know one thing about. When you went into McDonald's to get your hamburger, did you sit down? and start gobbling up your food like some heathen. There was no gratitude in your heart. Well, you know, I, I pray in church, and I, I can't pray in McDonald's. He said, if you're ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father. How dare you tell me you love God and you're so, and you're so pious in church, and you won't bow your head in a restaurant or McDonald's or whatever it is, and say, Lord, I thank you for this food. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not, it's not the beer joints that's giving us trouble today. And I wish there wasn't the one. It's not the X-rated movies that's giving us trouble. And I wish it all burned to the ground. It's not the bootleggers get. You know where our trouble's coming from? It's from people that sits in church and leaves one attitude and walks out the door and there's something else. By this, we'll all men know you're my disciple. 
I believe there ought to be a testimony that says to the world, I'm different from the world. I don't live the same kind of life they live. I walk different. I talk different. I don't go where they go. Amen? Amen. Now then, I use the word piety or pious. I think there ought to be humility. And I don't something talk about something you create. I'm talking about something that's in the heart of Amen. God's children. Amen. Something the world said. Oh, not that you get on your knees. Humility is not a position of the body. It's a condition of the heart. So many folks right now, so many, oh, I see them all around me. I see them all around me. And I'm so embarrassed and I'm so ashamed. Oh, listen. Some time ago in a revival I was in, the choir was singing so beautifully. And I was so impressed. And the next day, I was out in this little town that I didn't know nobody and they didn't know me and that was the first time I'd ever preached there. And suddenly, I walked in a place of business and there was the outstanding member of that choir. And I got news for you. If my dog could talk and use language like that, I'd kill him. Yeah. Yeah. And that man had the nerve. He never did recognize who I was. He was busy and using vulgarity. And that night, yes. he crawled up George in the choir and sang, and then got up and sang a special and crocodile tears yeah. rolling down his yeah, cheeks. Right, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Don't talk to me about preachers and say, well, I don't like the way he preached. He wasn't in the spirit. Shut up judging a man that don't jump around and run and scream and holler because he doesn't feel your little mole. I want to take a man that preaches this book yes, and I'll stand up and tell him like it is to men like we are. Hey, don't make a flip with you swing the chandelier or not. What I'd rather do, you know we've lost the art of something. We've lost the art of listening. We don't listen no more. I remember... I was uh, going to the hospital one night in a town where I was pastoring. And I told my wife, I said, I hear that so-and-so is going to preach. And I'm going to try to rush back to the hospital and get there in time to hear him preach. I got there and the brother's plane was a little late. And I eased in on the back pew and sat down. And the man, I, there was another man filling in preaching until this man got there. And I sat down by a man, and this man, while this man was preaching, this fellow back there in the back, jump up and say, preach there, shake that tree, bark again there, that's it, I like that, don't quit. And this man that was preaching, and I'm not making fun of nobody, he had a style. And that man sitting beside of me jumping up and said, shake that bush. Yeah. He sat back down and shook my shoulder and he said, boy, that's preaching, isn't it? And I looked at him and I said, brother, I can't understand a thing you say. He said, I can't either, but that's good preaching. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Are you getting the point? Yes, Do you see what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. If you go down to a doctor and you get, hey, I'll take two and eat these here and four and five more of these feeling after supper and, and you get taken. Well, you, Lord God, you take the whole bottle and die. <laughs> the doctor said, no. You take one of these pills before meals yes, and two before you go to bed. And then you have some bearing on what you're going to do. If your kid's Sunday school teacher were to get up and, and say, now then turn to page 19 and I, I want you to look at that problem right there. <laughs> no, Lord God, help us all. Gag a maggot. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Your kid would come home. One little boy went to school and said, Mama, my teacher loves me. She says, he does? Yeah. Said, he let me sit in the corner all day with a pointed hat on top of my head. <laughs> Our churches are filled, packed, running over with people that are destroyed for the lack of yes, knowledge. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen, preacher. Yes, sir. So many church members are so narrow-minded. Yes, sir. A 
mosquito could light on the bridge of your nose and kick both eyes out with one foot. A young man walked up to me not long ago and said, you don't preach like you used to. No, I said, wait till you get 72 and let me see how you preach. Yeah. Yeah. No. I may not preach as loud and as long, but I want to plow the corn while I'm up here. I want you to be able to get something you can take home with you. I want you to look at your testimony as you leave here tonight. Is there somebody in this community that would be saved if you didn't come here? Is there somebody going to go to hell because you are here? Will somebody's blood be on your hands when you stand before God? The girl said to her mom and daddy, get away from me. I don't have any confidence in you. Your neighbors, what kind of music do they hear coming out of your house? Wing and a wing and a wing, wing, wing and a wing and a wing and a wing, huh? How long's it been since your neighbors stood and heard amazing grace? How firm a foundation, you saints of the Lord. He leadeth me. He leadeth me. I'll go where he wants me to go. Does Jesus care? Instead of that, some old carnal, worldly yes. noise that folk call music. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. God help us. You say, what's wrong with our churches? Bad testimonies. Am I right, Brother Joel? Bad testimonies. I know of preachers that won't pay their bills. I'll sell the shoes off of my feet. I'll give you the privilege, and if they won't let you do it, I'll call and give them permission. Permission. You go check my credit reference anywhere you want. I'll give you that permission. And if you find something that's not paid, hurry to me fast. I want to pick up Coke cans or something to pay it. Why? Now then, listen to me. My old car got 200,000 on it. And I drove, an old car my wife's got, I drove it because the lights started going off of mine. And, but you know what? I'll, I'll sell everything I got. I will guard my testimony. The Bible said Enoch had a testimony. God, what kind of testimony is Enoch God? He said, it pleases me. It pleases me. Enoch, the seventh from Adam. What did he do? He walked with God. I like it. I love it. He walked. Till one day God translated him, moved him. Oh, folks, listen to me. You may live in a shack by the road, but if you've got a godly testimony, you are a rich man. Your testimony will live on after you're gone. I want my kids and my grandkids to be able to walk up and look at the remains of their papa and not have to be ashamed and hold their head up. I want that. I want them to say, Papa walked with God. He was misunderstood, but he walked with God. He was persecuted, but he walked. He was lied up, but he walked with God. See, I can come down here and I could really fool you, some of you. But I live on Sugar Creek Road. Isn't that a sweet address? Isn't that sweet? I live on Sugar Creek Road in La Cleveland. But walk up to the door, knock on the door, and a little gray-headed lady will come to the door. That's my Miss America, 
a lot prettier than your wife. If you don't feel that way about your wife, she ought to slap yours, you <laughs> Ask her, Miss Blue, how long have you lived with Ed? 50 years. Have you got any confidence in him? Yeah. We pray together. We sing blessed assurance together. We pray together. Amen? Yes, Amen. Oh, folks, God help you to realize when you walk out of here tonight, you're a rich man or woman if you've got a good testimony. Amen. But you are a pauper indeed if you live one life here and another out there. I might be able, I might could work something up here. I try. I might could tell you a sad story that would jerk a tear. Oh, God damn. I ain't that sad. I might could do that. But I ain't going to do it. I'm just going to keep on plowing. And I want this message to go home with you and get in the bed with you. <laughs> anyway. And some of you would get up and leave now. But if you did, they'd know I was plowing your corn. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> a rich man or a rich woman indeed my daughter was in school she was testifying to a little black girl and a girl that was filled with hatred because my daughter lived for God and wouldn't do what they do, run up to her and hit my daughter as my daughter walked down the hall testifying to this little black girl. The principal was watching it. And he's a godly man. He knew my daughter, he knew our home, and he'd been to church where I preached. And before you could bat an eye, this little black girl draw back and hit that girl that hit my daughter and knocked her down, got a straddle of her, and was beating her head against the floor. And said, now you look him. Said, Tim can't hit you because she's a Christian. But said, I ain't no Christian, and I'm going to beat the devil out of you. <laughs> and the principal said, I'll be if I'd let her alone. She had succeeded. <laughs> But watch it now. The next Sunday morning in church, my daughter was sitting right along where you and your wife were sitting. When the invitation was given, down the aisle came a girl with head bowed that my daughter didn't even know was there and touched her on the shoulder. It was the one that hit my daughter and said, Tina, would you go show me how to get saved? You either have a good one or a bad one. In the book of James, the Bible said, What is your life? Your life is a blessing or a burden. Your life is a help or a hindrance. Your life is gathering in or scattering abroad. Your light to somebody or darkness to somebody. You're helping or hindering. I wonder if one of your own children will plunge headlong into hell because you don't have a testimony at home. Oh, you can get up and wave your hand and shout at church. That's not worth a dime if you don't have a testimony at home. You're right, preacher. Not worth a dime in the world if your testimony is not secure on the rock at home. Oh, listen to me. I stood by the bedside of an old 
old saint that was getting ready to leave this world. And she said, Brother Blue, as I went in, she said, guess what? I said, what? She said, there's a great big angel standing right by your side. I said, sure enough. And she said, would you help me sing a song? And I said, yes, ma'am, I would. And with a little weak voice, we started. My strongest trials now are past. My triumph is begun. Oh, come, angel band, come and around me stand. Oh, bear me away on your snowy wings to my immortal home. I saw the doctor that waited on that aged saint. He stopped me in the hall of the hospital one day. He had come to her funeral. He said, Preacher, you preached her funeral? Yes. And you don't remember. But I did. He was a doctor. He died not long ago. He said, we were sweethearts in school. We said, I tried to date her, and she wouldn't date me. I said, why, Doc? Because he said, she said, call him my name, said, I respect you and I, I like you. But my life is going to be filled up with somebody that's got God on. And he said, I've watched her all of these years. And said, I was there a few minutes before she, and the big old tears started rolling down his cheeks. And he said, she had the greatest testimony I ever saw in the world. You are a pauper and a scavenger if at the end of your life somebody can't say they had a great George, I want to leave a good testimony behind. Not what others may think of my piety, but I want to walk with God daily. Listen to me, ladies and gentlemen. As you bow to your bed tonight, it would do you well to examine yourself. Have you got enough nerve to walk up to your neighbors that know you or they're on the job that know you and your children that sleep on the same roof and eat the same thing? Have you got enough nerve to walk up to them and say, have you got any, have you got any confidence in me? And tell them in advance, I want you to tell the truth if it hurts. Walk up to them and say, have I lived in such a way that you have confidence in me? Would you ask me to pray for you if you needed somebody to pray? If your children have to leave your house to get somebody to pray for them, whew, you're in bad shape tonight. Come on to the piano, please, young lady. Brother, get a song ready just as I am and come up to the stage and join me, please. Look up here at me. It's not been what some of you expected, but it's what God wanted. You'll leave here tonight. Oh, I hear a lot of noise in churches that God's not in. A lot of noise. My papa used to say an old empty wagon makes a lot of noise. Play softly, honey. Play softly. Look up here at me. I'm going to give an altar call in just a minute. Well, you can say, well, now, Brother Blue, what will people think 
If I go to the altar, you may be surprised. They already know, may know more about you than you think you do. There might be somebody here that gets saved tonight if they wasn't looking at the back of your head. They may know you. I remember as a little old boy, I was a kid, and I was hauling corn out of the river bottoms in a two-horse wagon to a man that was a deacon in the church where I went. The team was young, and I was supposed to drive up close to the crib where the corn could be thrown over in, and the young mules shied away and wouldn't get up there. I couldn't get them to do with that. And the man jumped up on the wagon, jerked the reins out of my hand, and brought out an oath and said, I'll get those blankety-blank mules up there. From that day till the day died, His testimony was ruined with me. Those bumper stickers you have on your car, you better be careful with your attitude. They may say one thing, and your attitude may be something else. Every head bowed, every eye closed, nobody looking around. Will you be honest with me? An old man's been honest with you. Will you be honest with me? Has God spoke to your heart tonight? Has God spoke to your heart about your testimony? Is it so important tonight that you feel like you ought to find your way to the altar and get out before God? There comes one. I wonder if there's another that just needs to get up and say, yes, preacher. I don't want to be the hindrance. I don't want to be a problem in somebody's life. But you need to get up right now and find your way here to the altar and say, oh God, help me. You may have to make some phone calls. You may have to go visit somebody tonight and ask them to forgive you. Is there a hand to go up and say, pray for me, preacher? Pray for me. Is there a hand? Yes. Is there a hand that'll go up and say, I need prayer in my life? I would want to die like this. I would want to meet God like this. Is there another hand that'll go up, please? Is there a hand that'll go up? Dear Lord, tonight, yes, God. I thank you for the sweet liberty you give me. Thank you, God, for letting me preach. Yes. But now, God, I pray as we sing the invitation hymn, may others come. May others, God, be reconciled to thee. Have your way now, we pray in Christ's name. Amen. Let's stand together. Brother, lead us in the hymn. While we sing, if God's dealt with your heart, I want you to come.